Hey there, fourth grade. Uh, we're going to change directions a little bit. Uh, we worked on multiples last week, and they're going to be involved in this. Today we're going to work on finding the nth term in a repeating pattern. Finding the nth term in a repeating pattern. I'll explain what that word means in a minute. But for now, go ahead and, uh, in your math notebook, write this as the title of your next blank page. And after you have done that, close it up and mark your page until we get to the video. So nth is a term that fancy mathematical types like to use um, to mean like, I don't I'm like, se think about the words like second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and things like that. Nth is kind of a way to say, like, well, the one kind of way out there, I don't know which one I'm talking about. So, like, the tenth term in a repeating pattern, or the hundredth term in a repeating pattern, or the two hundredth term in a repeating pattern. Nth just kind of means, like, any one I pick. And I, you know, 47th, or so on like that. So this just kind of means any future term. Um, and so we're not really going to use that term much in the lesson. It's just, like, that's a fancy math term I thought I'd put in the title. Um, so let's go, let's go back to the past. Third grade, probably actually even before third grade. Um, you know, you would take a pattern like triangle, circle, square, triangle, circle, square, triangle, circle, square, and so on and so forth. And you learned how to what we would call extend it. I would start giving you the pattern, and then you would say, okay, I know that the next, since it goes in this pattern, triangle, circle, square, triangle, circle, square, anytime I, after a square, the next thing's a triangle, then after the triangle, the next thing's always a circle, then after a circle, it's a square, and you could keep making the pattern go on and on. That's kind of like kindergarten through third grade pattern level stuff. So now in fourth grade, I'll stick with the same pattern. I'm going to stick with uh, uh, the same one, triangle, circle, square, triangle, circle, square, triangle, circle, square. But now in fourth grade, I want to say, well, what if I just asked you not to extend the pattern? What if I just ask you what's going to be the 15th term in that pattern without extending it? Or if, you know, you could probably, this is already nine. You could probably extend this out and get the 15th. So what if I went farther? What if I said the 50th one? Or the 100th one? Or the nth one? Any one I choose, the nth one. There are some things you can do. You know, I don't really want to extend this pattern out 100 times and see what the 100th term is, or even 50. So I want to talk about how to find out what a future term in a pattern is going to be without just writing the pattern out on and on and on and on and on and on and on like that. All right, so let me talk my way through this. Let's say, let's just, I'm just going to pick 50th. If I ask you to find the 50th one of these, is it going to be a triangle, a circle, or a square? So I'm going to use my knowledge of math to figure that out rather than my kindergarten ability to extend that pattern for a really long time. So let's, I'm going to make a table. These tables are often helpful in doing problems like this. I'm going to say which term and then what shape. All right, so my first term is a triangle. My second term is a circle. My third term is a square. My fourth term is a triangle. My fifth term is a circle. My sixth term is a square. Seventh term, eighth term, ninth term. And I think this is going to be enough for me to figure this out. So I'm looking for patterns here within my pattern even. So what I notice here, this is a three-figure repeating pattern, right? I do three things, and then I do those three things, and then I do those three things. So what I'm going to notice, if I have a pattern that repeats three figures, all my multiples of three are going to be the same thing. Check it out. Figure number three, figure number six, that's a multiple of three. 
and figure number nine are all the same thing. It's a three repeating pattern. And three times one, three times two, and three times three are all the same thing. So that means ev what I notice is every multiple of three is a square. That doesn't really hold up the other two, like four, I can say, I don't, you know, one, four, and seven are all triangles, but there's no, I can't, they're not the same, the multiple trick doesn't work the same way, neither does two, five, and eight. So I notice though, so what that means, every multiple to three is a square. That means I know that three times 10, that's the 30th term, that's gonna be a square because three times 10, 30 is a multiple of three. So if I kept making this table, the 30th one would be a square. So would three times 15 is 45. The 45th term is gonna be a square. I'm getting close to this 50 that I'm looking for, right? Three times 16 is 48. So I know the 48th term is gonna be a square. All the multiples of three are squares. Now, 50 is not a multiple of three. There's not a three times something equals 50. The next one, three times 17 is 51. So I know the 51st, 51st term is gonna be a square. And I can use this information to figure out what's gonna be the 50th term. Because now if I think about this table, term, shape, I know that the term number 48 is going to be a square, and I know that term number 51 is going to be a square, and from there I can figure out what 49 and 50 are. And I can say, okay, so 48 is a square, 49 is going to be a triangle, and 50 is going to be a circle. Pretty fancy, right? Cool, right? So what if I even, let me do it again, and let me say, let's go and figure out what's term number 100 going to be. Again, I know the multiples of 3 end up being squares. So like I know 3 times 30 is 90. That's a multiple of 3, so the 90th term is going to be a square. 3 times 33 is 99, so the 99th term is going to be a square, because that's a multiple of 3. And if the 99th term is a square, the 100th term is a triangle. Neat, huh? So I'm just using that how many times the pattern repeats, and I can figure that out. Let's do one together. Let, oh, open your notebook, grab your pencil, and write down this pattern for me. I got a, a pattern of letters A, C, X, P, F, A, C, X, P, F. So go ahead and pause right now and write this. I'll even make it a table. That's a little off center here. Term, letter. So I've got this pattern here. So go ahead and pause for a sec, write the pattern down, and then unpause. Okay, so in this pattern, you'll notice it repeats back to A after five terms. It repeats the same time, same five terms. So I notice in here, I have five repeating terms. And in a pattern that has five repeating terms, I'm going to notice that the multiples of 5 are always the same thing, the last one in that pattern. So I know that that means multiples of 5 are Fs. All right, so my question here is going to be, what's going to be the 25th? letter. And what's going to be the 52nd letter? 
and I do not want to extend that all out the way forever and ever and ever and ever to find that out. So I'm going to use this fives trick to figure it out. So you'll notice 25 is a multiple of 5. And I know that all the multiple of 5s are Fs. So since all the multiple of 5s are Fs and 25 is 5 times 5, that means 25th letter is going to be an F because all the multiples of 5 are Fs. 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 are always going to be Fs. So that one's like super easy to figure out because this is a multiple of 5. 52nd letter, I'm not so lucky, right? So I think the closest I can get for the 52nd letter is I can tell what the 50th letter is going to be. I know that the 50th letter is going to be an F because that's a multiple of 5. So if the 50th term is an F, I can then just repeat my pattern. Then I know that 51 is going to be an A, and I know that 52 is going to be a C. So I can use that knowledge of the pattern to say that the 52nd letter in my pattern will be a C. What do you think? So if, you'll, if I go back to my I do, so it's all about how many terms are in the pattern. So in, in this pattern, it repeated after three. And since it repeated after three, we could always know what the multiples of three would be. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen were always squares. And in this one, my letter pattern is a repeating pattern of five. So we could always know that the multiples of 5 are Fs. 5 is an F, 10 is an F, 15 is an F, 20 is an F, 25 is an F, 30 is an F, and so on. Thanks to that, we knew that 50 would be an F. And then we could use that to find A and C. Pretty cool, right? So that's how you find the nth term. Any future term in a pattern as far as you wanted to go. Um, that's how you figure it out you, in a repeating pattern. You just use your knowledge of multiples to find the closest one that, that is a multiple of the repeat, and then just count up from there. So, there you go. This is pretty tricky, so if you're having trouble with this, if this still isn't totally clear to you, this would be a good day to go back and watch the I do and the we do again now that you've seen them, and uh, make sure this really makes sense to you before you come tomorrow. But when you come tomorrow, we will analyze two more patterns. See you then.